and this is going to be the third video that I create as a pre-lecture for. Um, then there's I have a bunch of uh, work comp documents here and links to Department of Workforce Development, Wisconsin Compensation Rating Bureau, and so on. Now this PowerPoint is not mine. I, I took I took this online, but I, I found it and it doesn't. Yeah, why don't I click on it at the beginning? Uh, sorry about this. Um, but uh, this guy who put this together did a really good job, and so uh, Richard, Dr. Richard uh, Posthuma, but good for him. He did this, and we're going to use it uh, just because it's pretty good. So what is workers' compensation? It is a state-mandated requirement, so each state has their own work comp laws. It's a state-mandated requirement for all places of employment to purchase insurance that will cover costs associated with workers being injured. That's really what it is. Um, in, in addition to uh, providing benefits for medical treatment, it also provides uh, things like expenses so that uh, you know when workers have to drive here to there, it can reimburse them. It uh, pays them a, um, a, a wage while they well if they have to stay home and recover and it's not their full wage it's actually a percentage of their wage but then they don't pay um, you don't pay tax on it so in some states in some cases the person may actually get a little bit more or a little bit less it's not a perfect system the uh, the other benefits include um, if you were to if the person was to um, uh, receive a or incur rather a permanent disability in which they've lost a limb or the use of a limb or function of the body um, there are schedules set up by each state which um, indicate how much the person is going to receive in a lump sum lump sum payment for that particular loss um, but then there's also rehabilitation and retraining um, so, and there's also a death benefit, but the death benefit is not that great. Um, I, sh I, mean, I meant to say it's not that much. You'd be amazed what they put on as the maximum payment for um, a loss of life at work. Um, so when you look at the schedules within a state, what, under the schedule of what the loss might, might be for, for indemnity, um, it actually lists the number of weeks and so a person is compensated based on their weekly salary or their average weekly wages um, that kind of dictates how much it is so when you when you see some numbers that are posted on what people are getting for staying at home or for indemnity it's based on their actual wages versus a, a um, a standard setup so that a person who maybe has their hand lost in a fast food accident, maybe they work at a McDonald's or a Burger King or something, I'm not trying to limit it, they would not receive as much as, say, a physician who is operating and loses a hand. That person's going to basically make the maximum. They're not going to actually be compensated as much as the person who's working at, say, McDonald's or a Burger King. So that's the way it's set up. So, um, one thing I want to do, and we'll, we'll, we're going to see some terms such as risk on here. One thing I want you to, to, to write down right now is that you need to separate out the OSHA record keeping from the workers' compensation. There will be overlap in the recording of things and the analysis of things, but you really should consider them each separately. Um, you remember there's criteria on whether something's OSHA recordable. There's also, also criteria on whether something is work comp compensable, okay? So just uh, make sure you separate those. When people combine the two, they get really confused and then things go awry. Um, the, the focus of this uh, presentation by the good doctor that stole his thing is uh, risk avoidance, risk financing, loss prevention, loss reduction. So it, it, this is meant for human resource people, but we can definitely borrow from it and understand it. We'll be working with our HR, with our work comp, with management in dealing with work comp cases. In here it talks a little bit about state laws. Um, in certain cases, things like maritime, uh, uh, railroad, uh, mining may have specific work comp laws outside of the realm of government or, um, well, I should say governments like, like the state of Wisconsin. The people who work for the state, their work comp is covered through tax dollars. But then businesses have to um, purchase a... Uh, 
basically an insurance policy from a company who offers uh, work comp um, insurance options. Uh, so th th I mentioned this just briefly that there's there's commercial insurance that you purchase like uh, Liberty Mutual, uh, Heartland, uh, Acuity, uh, Aon. All these insurance companies have lines of commercial work comp insurance and you purchase it just like you would when you purchase your car insurance or home insurance or whatever it might be. And based on the type of work you do, which is the risk, so the risk of getting hurt, how much it might cost, you pay a premium. And then there may be a deductible built in there too. And I mean, if you've been involved with car insurance at all, it, it is very similar in mechanics. There's also state funded in certain states. Um, there, are, there, there are options for companies, especially if the, maybe they can't currently afford um, the commercial insurance. There might be something that is offered through the state to get you know, new or smaller companies up and running. There are risk pools, which you don't want to be in the pool. Companies who used to be covered by commercial insurance, but they were such bad actors, they had such uh, a, a bad history or experience with injuries and illnesses, no company would insure them. They are then put in the risk pool. It's almost like punishment. It's like sit in the corner and think about it, and they have to pay a lot to be in the risk pool. And then there's self-insurance. Um, larger companies who have greater assets, greater liquid assets, can actually fill out paperwork and, fi and, and file it with the state. In Wisconsin, it's the Department of Work Workforce Development, showing that they can handle um, all of their own um, injury and illness costs. Um, they may still purchase maybe a supplemental insurance policy for a commercial. Um, it's like a stop loss policy. So if something was to get above a million dollars, now it would kick in, but they'll cover everything under a million. But that's an option. Another option, which you don't hear as much, is when a group, they call it a, a cooperative of companies, get together and share their assets and then they become self insured. But that's kind of risky because if one company has a bad day, it can sink the whole consortium. Um, well, this kind of talks about you know, more stuff. We don't have to go through that. Okay, so uh, eligibility for benefits. It kind of talks about, you know, when someone gets hurt. So basically when they go to the doctor, they get sent to the doctor. That's when you really fill out the paperwork. And, the, and in every state has deadlines. So many days in which certain paperwork needs to be filed with the carrier. And then certain number, you know, within certain days, people start receiving their benefits. Um, so, you know, medical payments are made. Um, uh, lost time is paid, but only after certain criteria have been met. So in Wisconsin, uh, if you're off for under three days or three days or less, uh, you don't receive any um, lost time. That's something you're supposed to use either vacation or sick leave for. But then you can start collecting on the 4th, the 5th, the 6th. If you reach 7, at that point you can actually um, receive the initial three days, which is like, okay, they've been off for seven days, calendar days, um, they can now receive all the all the loss pay but if it's less than that you you don't get it and I mean for obvious reasons most most cases people can get back to work within three days or at least within seven days that's a majority so the work comp carriers save a lot of money by not doing that it just is and it doesn't count as much against you um, for, against your premiums um, let's see here I had talked about the benefits and there are maximum amounts you can receive um, depending on the case and how much goes out it can it'll affect your experience which will then uh, raise or lower your EMR uh, on the screen here uh, we've got the wage loss benefits there's permanent total permanent partial total per, uh, sorry temporary total and temporary partial so permanent total means you can't go back to work that's going to be expensive permanent partial means you're going to get some sort of indemnity payment, a lump sum for loss of limb, function, quality of life. Temporary total means you just have to stay home and recover, but eventually you'll get 100%. Temporary partial means, well, you can actually go back to work in a limited capacity. Um, one thing you want to know is that work comp, we use a term exclusive remedy in which um, no one is, you know, the employers aren't blamed and, and at the same point uh, workers don't have to sue their employer to cover costs and so it's kind of this like other line um, of, of assistance out there. So it's kind of a, of, of a social thing but um, it's also, you know, controlled 
by companies as well and so it, it's a good thing it, it, it prevents a lot of um, lawsuits because that's the way people used to have to that's that was the van the the venue people had to use when they got hurt in order to get the employer to pay for the doctor's bills they'd have to sue them and so we got rid of that and so you know the cost the, I should say you know workers never say it's enough employers say they pay too much but the taxpayers the public we benefit the most because um, our courts aren't uh, log jammed with all these um, claims and then there's re, you know rehabilitations in their death benefits I had talked about that employers pay the entire cost of it because they're they're buying it. it's like insurance so it's like a cost of business and it depends again on what industry you're in um, it's based on a percent payroll by job classification I've got a table coming up and I'm gonna try to get to that really quickly here because I feel like this is taking too long the experience modification rating was mentioned in class uh, um, or lecture last week uh, basically based on three years of um, claims history not the current or the previous year because claims may still be open but rather you know the second year prior and then the the two years prior to that so uh, this year it's 2015 so we wouldn't obviously use 2015 and we wouldn't use 2014 yet either because likely there may be still some open cases so for for this year's EMR the calculation will be based on how our safety program performed or you know what our injury history was or injury experience was in 2013 2012 and 2011 now for a moment think of your think where you were in 2011 that seems like a long time ago doesn't it um, and so realize that a major accident or a bad year can affect a company's um, bottom line for um, the following five years not that current year not the next year but then for for three years while it's still on their um, on their, I want to say on their record, but still being used in the calculation of the EMR, that may, you know, a bad year or, or, or bad incident may increase it substantially. So they're paying, you know, six figures more per year or something, and then that adds up to a lot after the third year. So it's important that we invest in safety and prevent accidents the best we can because it, it, it kind of doubly beats up on companies. So this is interesting. This is how the premium is calculated. So you got the job classifications on the left and there's a code associated with those. Each state kind of has their own but they adopt it from a national database. You got the number of employees within there. Sometimes what they do is they calculate it based on per $100 payroll per week and then you've got the basic rate. So an office person, you're only paying 29 cents, and then that's the total. Well, actually, it, this should be based on. So we've got these workers. This is their payroll. It should be per 1,000 or something. So actually, it's going to be 1,000 something times by that. It's not working out perfect, but believe me, when you look it up, it kind of shows that it's a multiplier, and then you get the premium amount. And depending on how you know risky it is, so maintenance has a much higher number here. Warehouse is there, truck drivers are there, and you bring in the payroll, but it's a percent of the payroll, a small fraction of it. Um, you get this premium amount, then you add it up, and so for this company, based on what's here, you're going to have um, they're going to pay you know 3.77 million a year to have um, to have that uh, policy. Now, I don't want to get too far into this. I just wanted you to have a basic idea of what is workers' compensation. Um, and you can take a look at this presentation. I do have it posted. Um, basically, I just wanted you to know what it was. Okay, And I will talk about it in class, too, because there's you know, a little bit more to it. So that's it.